Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. What's going on? Welcome back. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thanks for joining us again this week. So this week, we are revisiting the grind list, the mm-hmm. grind list 2.0. Yep. This yep. is uh, our list of if you're looking to churn up work, which we've heard from some of the people we're coaching, hey, I just need more work. I need more work. I, you know, we've, we've I- economy wise, guys are trying to churn up work right now. Well, so and it's also, it's a common theme that we hear with people sending comments and yep. emails, our current clients. It's just, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, throughout whether economy or not, there's yep. a lot of times that guys are like, hey, how do I churn up more business? How do I get more work? Yep. So today we're talking through, it's a revised list. It's 10 items. Last time we had six, mm-hmm. but it's a revised list of if you're looking to get more work today, this week, this month, these are some things you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, this is a write this down, take this with you. If you're doing these things, you're going to be getting more work. So we're yeah. covering that today, running through one through 10, and that's all we got for you today. So, great. Number one, the first thing I would suggest if you're looking to churn up work is contact real estate agent offices. They do once a month meetings. Sometimes uh, some offices do every every other week. Some offices do every other month. They, some people, so, some offices do it once a quarter, depending they do quarterly on quarterly or over Zoom. Yeah. But try and contact the local Caldwell Banker, Keller Williams. That uh, I know Caldwell Banker has like a referral list that you can get on for mm-hmm. very cheap preferred vendor preferred list. Vendor list. Mm-hmm. But go and try and sponsor one of their meetings. You go in, you bring them donuts. You get five minutes before the meeting starts, and you say, "Hey." My name's Clark. I'm with X, Y, and Z Construction. Uh, wanted to let tell you guys a little bit about our company, what we can do. We do full service renovations. We do X. We know we we do electrical. We do flooring. Whatever it is. Yeah. If you need someone that could be in your back pocket that you can call when you need anything, I'm your guy. Yeah. Here's my business card. Thanks so much. That's it. A yeah. very short three to four minute intro of who you are and what your goals are and making them look good as agents. That was well, always my go-to line. One, one of the things that, uh, you know, some advice about what to say in yeah. that and kind of your your stance, your perspective of like how what you're talking about, uh, you're not the only one who's wanted to do this and sat in front of them. And most everybody that does that goes in and says, I do this, I can do this, mm-hmm. I offer this, this is who I am, I have all these services, blah, 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 blah. Um, that sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. What you do is you identify what are their problems? What are they struggling with? What are their needs? And then, you know, state those things. Here are the problems that I've seen. Are those right? Do you do you guys experience those? Here's how what I offer can help solve that, yep. right? By doing that, you actually, in their brains, they start seeing themselves, oh, dude, I wish I had had him to call yep. at this time, well, at that and, time. And I'll, I'll give you what that problem is that they're looking to solve. <laughs> Real estate agents want to not be a general contractor, mm-hmm. and homeowners usually push the G, the the their real agent, agent to, mm-hmm. to handle all because they're in the industry. Right. So what I always did, I, I approached real estate agents and said, "Hey, listen, I know your number one uh, important thing that you want to ensure when referring someone is that your name is taken care of. Right. And I know that. And so everything I do and say to your client is filtered through making you look good as their agent. That's why I'm heavy on communication, on advocacy, on helping your clients succeed and really kind of, kind of pushing them and having the relationship with you to right. where me and you can work together to get this house on the market or if they're buying, get, get it ready for, for them to move in. Yep. But if I'm focused on the agent making a good name for themselves and they, they can put their reputation on the line by referring me, mm-hmm. that's where they're like, cool, I'm going to try you out. I can help make you the hero of your story, yep, right? Yep. Of what you're doing. Let me help make you the hero to your clients. Our, our HVAC company, uh, when we got started doing doing this as well with them, it was is number two on our list, email blasting any real estate agents you can find. Mm-hmm. So going and scraping the internet of email agent uh, emails, uh, email agent, real estate agent emails. Yeah. And so what what we did is we went through, I had, I had my guy that was running our HVAC company spend a full day just pulling emails off of websites, off of Facebook, off of anywhere he can find it. Real estate agents put their email out there everywhere because they want you to contact them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we pulled those together and we sent individual emails to each one and said, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm with this company, we do HVAC work in your area. 
I know your reputation is important. I want to make you a better agent by being on your team. Mm -hmm. I want to prove myself to you. I'm going to, uh, if you have any HVAC needs at your personal house, I'm going to do it at cost for you. I want to show you what we can do. Uh, I'll service your system. I'll, I'll do a, an annual service for 80 bucks to try and show you what we can do, whatever it is. Well, and, and that like offering something like that to them personally, mm -hmm. you'll get calls. Yep. You yep. will get calls. And they have this code of ethics where they can't take free stuff to mm -hmm. refer you. But at the same time, I, let me show you what I can do and show you my communication and how I show up when I mm -hmm. say I'm going to show up. Yeah. So that's number one and two is visiting the offices. Number two is you, if you're listening to this right now, sitting at home saying, I got no work, what do I, what do, I do? Get on the internet and start emailing people. Yeah. It, it's going to take a thousand emails to get three jobs out of it. But can you do, send a thousand emails today? So mm -hmm. you turn up three jobs in one day. That's, yeah. a, that's a good day. Well, what if one of those jobs is a hundred and fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollar job? Right. Exactly. That's a that's a great land. Going back real quick to yeah. to, to number one, um, this is uh, this is an interesting thing. But you know, some going into the real estate agent offices, doing the thing, and then and then handing out business cards is fine, yeah. right? But a business card is it's trash. Yep. Right. It's it's gonna go into the the clip, the you know, the thing, the the drawer with all of them. Um, having some kind of trinket, some kind of widget that's got your name, that's a helpful thing. Right. Um, it could be a stress ball, it could be a uh, uh, one that you've got in your drawer, a um, tape, tape measure, measure yep. right? That you've had for years. Yep. Right. Because it's I I, I could use a tape measure. Bosch it's just, HVAC. Yeah, that's it. Gave me a tape measure once, and I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. You, you all, uh, we can all always use another tape measure, right? Yeah. So th that is a helpful thing to help you stand apart. And also when that real estate agent goes back to their desk, again, your card goes into the the, the card drawer with everybody else's, but yeah. the pen, the pencil, the, the tape measure, the thing, some kind of trinket, widget, doodad that, you know, they'll keep. It could be useful. Even, you know, if you don't go that far, a magnet, yep. right? Something that like it, it's got, it can't go in a drawer. I mean, I guess it can go in a drawer, but you typically just put it somewhere. So what I used to do when I was doing, I, I had every single real estate office in Atlanta when I first started 18 years ago, 20 years ago, whenever it was. And uh, I would go in, I'd leave my cards in their break room. I'd give my card personally to each person and I'd have a, a five by seven flyer mm -hmm. and I'd pin it on whatever pin boards that they've had back in their office. Uh -huh. Cause they always have some sort of cork board on mm -hmm. the wall. Oh yeah. And so I would do that. And then whenever I was in those areas again, I'd pop into those offices two months later Say hi to the front desk. Say hey, just dropping off more cards. They don't. The front desk doesn't know what you're there for. Right. And I walked right back to the same spot. Put more cards down. Pin more stuff on the on the. And I would I would just keep visiting because once you're in, you're in. And, yep. and once once you have it, have it there. You're well, and that's good. a the, that's one that you know sometimes you 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 can turn up immediate work. Mm -hmm. um, and you know a lot of times you can't. You get you know it might be a small little thing or whatever. But that is a that, that is an investment that keeps on giving years and years and years later. We still get calls yeah. from when you did that 10 20 years ago. Yep, I'm still right? in their phone. Yeah. That was the other thing I'd say is listen, you, you don't need me till you need me and then you're not going to find me. Right. And so what I want you to do, everyone pull out their phone, add me in as a contact. I'd yep. say this every single mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and have them put me into their phones to where now say Put me under contractor. Yeah. Search contractor on your phone. You're going to find me. Yeah. All right. So that's number one and number two, both both with real estate agents. Mm -hmm. Number three, great spot as a as a contractor to churn up work, insurance agents. Yep. If you're hitting in insurance agency uh, offices, going in, talking to them about what you do, leaving your card. How do I get in with you? What do you need? What level of insurance do you need for us to work with you? How do we get your your clients? That's a great way to churn up guaranteed work because insurance agents are working with the flooded floods in houses, mm -hmm, the fire mm -hmm. houses, um, damage, insurance required yeah, repairs, trees yeah. coming through roofs, that type stuff. And they, their biggest issue for them, just like agents is dealing with the right contractor. Cause if an agent, if a insurance agent has a bad contractor and they're trying to pay the wrong person, mm -hmm. it takes a ton of oh, their yeah. time to settle that claim. So, so it's just like a real estate agency, um, insurance companies, both of them have a list of preferred vendors. There's a lot of times that, um, you know, whatever, you've got a remediation that needs to be done in your kitchen and you need all the, you know, need all that taken care of. They'll give you a list of, Hey, here's a, here's a list of some preferred vendors. Yep. You don't have to go with them, but yep. these are the people that we know, um, which will land 
land you jobs because, uh, like we've said in many, many podcasts, clients are afraid to call just random off the internet contractors because they're afraid they're going to get screwed. If there's a preferred list from an agency, it feels like, oh, they're more trusted. They're vetted. They're, they're vetted. Yep. Right. That's so, right. Yeah. And, and again, just like real estate agents, insurance agents, your service to both of those are convenience and ease. So yep. I'm not selling them how great I am at doing a kitchen. I'm telling them, listen, I understand your job and I am going to make it easier than the other guys. Right. That's all they care about. They don't care if you're twice the price. Mm -hmm. They want the, they want to do less work. Yeah. Yeah. Right? All right. So number three on this list is our cross trades. Number four. Oh, you're right. Number four <laughs> on the list. So not good at reading. No, no, number right. four on our list is cross trade. So. Mm -hmm. If you work with a water remediation company or a waterproofer who does basements, they're, they don't do put back often, right. right? So make those connections. Start talking to them. Talk to your flooring installer. He works with a ton of different people. Say, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a referral fee. If you can mm -hmm. refer anybody to me, I'll, I'll use you for the yep. flooring, obviously. But a lot of times people are reaching out to you for flooring and they want their whole house done. Yep. Uh, talking to cross trades like that, electricians, plumbers, all those, uh, all of those uh, specialty trades that are not just working for you, but are working for homeowners as well. Yeah, toss some referral fees. Try to try to get in with their clients as well, uh, and and try to have that partnership. Well, with them. That, that, that that can be an opportunity for them. Once you let them those people know, like, hey. I would love for you, if you run across anything that you could introduce me into a new client that you do work for, yep. or you're at a client's property and that comes up that they need something that you know that I can handle, I'll give you a referral fee for that. So that, you know, electricians on site and they hear somebody talking about, oh, we need to find somebody to do this thing. Hey, I got a guy that, that you know, yep. and so it just becomes, if it's on their brain, they're going to naturally kind of help uh, uh, make that connection for you. Like, hey, man, I might make a couple hundred bucks just yep. from sending this guy over there. Yep. You know, that's right. All right, number five, investor groups and RIAs, mm -hmm. uh, as well as like a chamber of commerce type group. So uh, RIAs are like the real estate investor groups that uh, a lot of cities have them. Like we're in Georgia, there's a Georgia RIA, there's yeah. a, t a Tennessee RIA that, that we've talked to. So there's different RIA groups in different areas. Um, there's an Atlanta RIA, not just the Georgia one chapter. So there's a, a there's lot a of- There's a DIA, wait a minute. Di the diarrhea. Uh, no, there's a, a lot of different groups like that where investors get together, work together, network with each other. Mm -hmm. You might have to pay a fee to go to one of those. It's worth it. Meet yeah. those people. Get get uh, acquainted with them. I hated those. I am not, I am not an extrovert. I'm not yeah. Jared. I don't enjoy those settings, but I would turn it on and fake it, show up to yeah. those, uh, and say, I'm not leaving until I get 10 business cards. Mm -hmm. Because well, I'd, I'd bail out pretty quickly if I didn't have a goal. And the and the benefit of those different than uh, you know insurance agents and and real estate agents those are kind of spotty hit or miss when they come ac come around. You make some connections over there with some you know individual investors who are buying and flipping properties or buying and holding properties, and they just need somebody to come in and execute really quickly. You work your way into a place where you're doing jobs at a property that are vacant, yeah. right? That become easier jobs to just get in, get out. You're not dealing with homeowners. You've got one per, you know, so you can get into a level of business that allows you to um, create some stability of cash flow. Yep. When there's ebbs and flows in the homeowner world, you might have built some investor relationships that are, are, are able to bring in some steady cash flow. Yeah, and, and your pitch to an investor is, is twofold. One, I want to partner with you. You mm -hmm. know, your job is finding, renovating, and selling, or yeah. finding, renovating, and renting. Right. Most of the time, sometimes you don't renovate. Great. Don't don't have me part of those deals. Right. But let's partner in this and get these houses done quickly and efficiently, mm -hmm. to where you're not having to be a GC. And right. then I say, if you're doing one house every six months it's probably more financially beneficial for you to manage your own crew. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to build value. But right. once you're at a spot that you're constantly uh, acquiring properties and it's worth 5 to 10% more of a spend on the renovation to, to, expedite have, me, it. to right. have me manage mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and you're out selling the, that house uh, as we're finishing it, you're out acquiring Getting the next one, mm -hmm. the next one. It, that time spend, the 5 to 10% extra on the $50,000 renovation, would you spend five grand extra to be able to not have to deal with any on-site stuff and let me handle it all for you? And right. that's the sell point to them. That's yeah. the value build you're giving them is more of their time back when it's valuable enough. Now, if, yeah. like I said, if they're doing two houses a year, 
you're not going to be valued to them. Yeah. They're doing eight houses a year. You are going to be a value to them. So. Well, and uh, you know, you can also talk to them as you're, you're talking about partnering with them is like, you know, uh, working, you know, us working together, I'm going to be working to get to know your specifics, your desires, what you want, what houses look like at yep. the end, what, you know, the, the, there, there are plenty of people like this that I've worked with in the past that they didn't really care about how clean that, I mean, it needed to be clean, but they're not walking around with a white glove. But if there was any flash or any kind of issues with paint, they had an issue. Yep. Right? They, they didn't like it. And vice versa. I've had other guys that they didn't give a rats about the paint. It looks good enough, but yeah. it better be clean as crap. Yeah. Right. And so I've, I've got experience with that. And so what I would be working towards is helping to understand exactly what you want on our first, second, third house. So then it's just a wash, rinse, repeat, yep. and you've got less and less that you need to be interacting with me because you know that I understand yep. what you want delivered. Yeah, and we do we do a little less uh, markup on investors because mm-hmm. we're doing less work. I don't right. have to do the handholding. I don't have to clean the house up and deal with your wife cooking dinner tonight. And so the tools were in their way, and this was an issue. Uh, can you all come out here and do this? I'm not. There's a lot less handholding right. that's needed, so I don't need to. I mark can afford it up as to much. do it a little bit less. Right? Yeah. I don't need to build in the profit for myself for walking through Home mm-hmm. Depot to pick things out. Well, I mean, technically, the, the reality is, if it's a 10 day job, if I apply a homeowner into that 10 day job, it now became a 20 day job. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's just the reality of it. But because there's no homeowner, and we can come at five o'clock in the morning, we can leave at eight o'clock at night, depending on you know HOAs and all that stuff. But it allows us to be able to execute a lot faster, which means that the management overhead is less. Yep. So I, I can charge less. That's right. So number six, investor group. I'm sorry, a Facebook groups mm-hmm. like an investor Facebook group. Uh, there are groups like uh, contractor groups, real estate agent groups, uh, city area groups in, in your area. Get on Facebook. And what you need to do is every day post respond to other people's posts, have yep. a conversation. The more you talk in those groups, the more you're visible to the people in those groups uh, mm-hmm. as the, the algorithm works with Facebook. So the more that Facebook says, hey, this guy's a contributor here, let's show him to more people. Right. And so I'm not just pushing, I'm giving value to others. I'm giving value. Uh, I, you know, I, there was a, uh, I forget what, what it was. It was a local group that I, I remember I used to post in all the time. And I, it was it was a mom's group actually, mm-hmm. and uh, my wife was a member of it, and I would go in as her and just post, "Hey, if, uh, my husband's a contractor. If you need help with that, right? Yep, I, I'd got leads all the time. From oh yeah, that, right. And so stuff like that to where it, it's it's refer referring clients like that to yourself as well as going in and helping people solve problems. Hey, I'm looking at doing this. Hey, I wouldn't do it this way. It'd probably save you money if you went ahead and just refinish the tile in the bathroom instead of replacing it. Yeah. Let me know if you need help with that. But yeah, that's what I'd suggest doing. People are attracted to uh, a, a person who's giving away free things, free yes. advice, free direction. Yep. That's they'll, they'll contact you. And also in those groups, you know, one of the things that I've seen is like, you know, a lot of times in those groups, you'll see the guy be like, hey, I've got you know, X amount of square feet of sheetrock that I need installed. Can I get somebody, is there somebody out there that can, can help me with that? That person is doing other things than just sheetrock. He's mm-hmm. got a bigger scope of things happening. Make a contact, say, Hey, what are you doing? Uh, you know, I, I offer these services. Is that something that I can come in and work with you and kind of expedite this stuff? So you're not out here trying to find all, you know, so yep. just working to find uh, uh, relationships and networking out there and you, you'll you end up in front of people who are like, I'll, I'll put you to work. You, right. you expedite what I'm trying to do. That's right. All right. Number seven on the list. We are going to email every past client. Mm-hmm. There's three types of clients that you have in the past. You had a bad, they had a bad experience with you. Mm-hmm. They had a good experience with you and they didn't choose you with somebody else. Right. Right. And so in the software, the, they didn't choose you. They went with someone else. Those are all going to be the dead estimates. Yeah. Right. The, that category of estimates that, that went dead. So what I'm going to do is open up my dead estimates. I'm going to go in and I'm going to start sending the same email to each one. Uh, if it was a recent dead estimate, I'm going to say, Hey, would you mind sharing with me how the job went? Is there anything I can do to help you? A lot of times the job doesn't go well because they picked mm-hmm. the other guy who was cheaper. And yep. the cheaper guy is terrible service. And so, A, we've talked about this in past podcasts. If I lose a job, I'm falling up in a month and a half saying, hey, how's it going? Mm-hmm. Anything I can help you with? Yeah. But even if it's a year later, I can still email and say, hey, just so you know, I'm still here. If you need anything, let me know. Mm-hmm. Because they probably had a really bad experience with whoever they picked. There's a good chance. Right. And they were going to need someone in the future. And so I'm reaching out to those people saying that. Now, if you had a bad experience with me, I'm reaching out saying, hey, Jared, 
Listen, I, I know that we did that basement for you and there were those three hiccups. I First off, I apologize about that. A lot of that's changed on how I communicate. I'm on this software now where I'm communicating weekly. I'm doing this, this, and this. I'd love you to give me another chance if you have anything, any other work that you need mm-hmm. done. I'd love to prove uh, myself uh, and our company to you and, right. and show you how we've changed. Yeah. Um, the other, if you have a good experience, is an obvious and easy one. Hey, let me know if there's anything else we you you need. Uh, you know, I live and die by referrals. If you have anyone in your neighborhood or family and friends that need any work, please let them know I'm available for this to them. I'd be super appreciative uh, of of any sort of referral that you have. Right. Uh, right. So those are kind of the three different types mm-hmm. of clients that you're going to be emailing. But just go through them. You've got them all in your computer. You've you had those conversations and spent the time getting to know them and them getting to know you. Utilize that yeah. that uh, time spend that you have in the past. The the interesting thing about uh, the the debt estimate one is that you know in the client's brain they uh, whether they you know think about it or not their feeling about you is that they rejected you. Yeah. Right. They said no. They rejected you. And so even though they're having a bad time, maybe with the contractor they're current using, they're going to be less likely to pick up the phone and call you and say, hey, my bad. I'm sorry I rejected you. But could you help me? Yeah. Right. So by initiating that conversation, you're kind of breaking Open that the door. You're opening the door and saying, hey, no harm, no foul. If you need some help, I'm glad to help you out. Yep. Um, you know, bad experience. The the uh, one of the things about that is, you know, you're. Most of the time, you're not going to get a job from the person that got the bad experience, mm-hmm. right? Most of the time. It's a small percentage you're going to get it. But people are going to ask, hey, who did this renovation, right? And if you haven't made that contact, they're going to be like, oh, this dude, you don't want to use them, yep. right? But if you've made that contact and said, hey, I'm sorry about that experience. I'd love to help you out. Here's a couple of things that I've implemented to help uh, circumvent that situation from happening again, the, when there's somebody asking them about it, they might say, you know what? It wasn't great with me, but the guy called me and told me some of the things that he's implemented. You might want to try them out. Yep. Right. So the, it, it opens up the opportunity for some more referrals That's by right. doing that one. All right. Number eight uh, out of 10 <clears throat> is our housewarming parties. Now yep. this one isn't, I'm going to get work by Friday, but yep. what we like to do, if you have a large job, if you have a high end job, if you have a nice kitchen, something mm-hmm. show showable, mm-hmm. is we sponsor housewarming parties for our clients. So yep. I just, let's say I just finished Jared's brand new kitchen. He spent 120,000 on this amazing kitchen, all, you know, all high end. He's right. got, uh, you know, his house is worth 3 million. He's got a ton of neighbors, uh, in that neighborhood with all with the same house, mm-hmm. the same uh, level of disposable income. Uh-huh. I'm going to say, Jared, let me sponsor a housewarming party for you. What we like to do is thank you for choosing us for this for this renovation. Uh, and let you throw a party to show it off. We're going to show we're going to show it off for us. What we get out of it is we get to meet neighbors or anyone else that mm-hmm. sees your kitchen and loves it. For you, it's it's a way to uh, us to say thank you and just throw you a party. We'll bring in some barbecue or some tacos, chipotle, you know, yep. whatever, uh, right? And and you know, it maybe costs some, maybe some drinks or costs whatever. you three hundred dollars yeah. in catering, and it mm-hmm. costs you you know one hundred and fifty in in some alcohol. And, and honestly, drinks. if you if if you spent a thousand dollars and really knocked it out of the park and brought a bunch of different stuff, yep. you look at it as a thousand dollars worth of marketing, but you're in front of people that are going to be actively interested. Yep. Yep, the, you know? that's the best referral you're going to get. The, yeah. be, the hottest clients that you're going to meet are their neighbors because usually no one's renovating a house that was built two years ago. Right. Right. That $3 million house is probably 15 years old and is ready for a turnover, mm-hmm. which means the whole neighborhood's there yep. for that. Yeah. So that goes into number nine also. If you're not going to go at all out with a home, uh, with the housewarming party, number nine on our list is. I am going to do neighborhood mail outs mm-hmm. uh, to the neighbors that I'm working on. So uh, same situation. We just did this just did uh, in yeah. Atlanta. We had a house in a neighborhood that we're like, this is a great neighborhood. It's the aged right. It's the right uh, level of income. Uh, so we're going to put a sign in the front yard. Uh, we had actually done a, mo- a couple of jobs in that neighborhood and actually had a friend in the neighborhood. And we put signs in all of those. And we yeah. said, hey, we're going to do a mail out to your neighborhood. Neighborhood's riddled with uh, uh, Yeah, we've signs. got like four signs out yeah. in the neighborhood right now because we're like, hey, I know we renovated your house two years ago, but we're about to do a mail out to the neighborhood. Would you mind me sticking a sign in the front yard? If they had a good experience, like, yeah, go ahead. Stick yeah. it out there for a week. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I have four signs in the neighborhood. Even if you don't, even if you have one, put put your sign out in the yard. I'm going to have my, we had our office manager write out every address because it was handwritten on the, mm-hmm. on, and how do you, how did she do that? 
Well, we went to Google and found the address uh, on the government website mm -hmm. of everybody on that street. You yep. got names, address. All you got to do is go to a, the government website where you're looking up properties mm -hmm. and you search for the street name and it's going to pull up every street name in that city yep. uh, with that, that matches there. So we searched street names. We pulled up all the addresses and their names and hand wrote that on the, on the front. Yeah. We then printed out. Hey, we're in your neighborhood working. Your neighbors love us. We'd love to, we'd love to, if you have anything that you want us to look at while we're here, we'd love to look at it. We're already in the neighborhood. Call this number, send an email here, go to this website if you want to get a free estimate going today. Right. Right. Uh, and we have a signature at the bottom uh, from our general manager. Then we also get a quote from one of the people that we've worked with in the neighborhood and highlight that at the bottom from your neighbor on Oak Avenue. Yeah. This company was amazing at blah, 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 whatever it is. And yeah. we put a highlighter on that to, to mm -hmm. make it extra, you know, jump out to the person. <laughs> and if they haven't it. given you a quote, you can actually write a quote that you think that they would say and go say, hey, would you mind if I put this as a quote for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, uh, that's exactly my, right. My email to them is, hey, we, we're going to do a mail out. and I'd love to get a quote from you if we've earned it. Yeah. Um, Here's some other quotes we've used in the back in the past. I can mm -hmm. use one of these if one of those hit to to is accurate, a, accurate mm -hmm. to your feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if you want to give me a quote, great. Or if you don't want to use a quote, no problem. I, I don't I don't need to use a quote from you. Yeah. Up to you. Right. And so a lot of times we're like, yeah, that first one that is there. Go ahead and use that. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. And but that's a really important piece of it, because if a if a homeowner blind doesn't know anything about you and they get a <laughs> mailer of like this thing there's no connection. Yep. But if you're like, you know, George Smith from down the street or, or Mr. Smith from around the corner from you said this about us, there's a, there's a little bit of connect of like, Oh yeah, I do remember seeing that yard sign in his yard. Yep. Right. So it creates that validation. It creates a little bit of trust of like, Hmm, well, I, I am interesting. You get yep. the interior painted or yep. whatever. That's right. right. All right. Number 10, 10 out of 10 on the list is we like to have our project managers carry blank estimates mm -hmm. Uh, with no address or job items on it, just print out a blank one. And when they're in the neighborhood, when they see a house that is maybe the roof's old, maybe the siding you is got some soffit uh, and fascia uh, rot, whatever, whatever it is, I'm mm -hmm. gonna write out on hand write on the quote from the street. I see this. If there's anything on the inside you want quoted, let us know. Here's kind of our pricing. Want to introduce ourselves. And we tape it to the mailbox and we keep going. We're not allowed to open mailboxes legally, but right. I can tape it to it. So right. we would put that in an envelope, put it on the mailbox, leave a door hanger, whatever you want to do. But inter that's kind of the same thing as a mail out, but even more targeted to where, hey, I see you need this. Now, you don't want to insult people. You don't want to be like, hey, your house is ugly. Right. But at the same time, say, hey, this is kind of some of our pricing you know, for a roof your size. It's about this. When, when you're in the in the market, you know, we can paint a house your size from – uh, you know, eight to 12,000, depending on, you know, a, a couple of different issues. So that's that sort of thing to where we're keeping it broad, giving them details about our pricing mm -hmm. to where someone says, oh, you know, we, we had someone um, call us and, and say, listen, I, I need to get my house painted, but I don't have 30 grand right now to put it's into funny. it. That's the same story. I was yeah, thinking. And yeah. it's like, oh, hey, it's going to be half that. Right. Like it's not 30 grand. And once they see the actual price, like, oh, uh -huh. I in my head, I thought it'd be 30,000 to paint this house. Mm -hmm. I've got that money. I uh -huh. can I can go ahead and do that. So giving people that pricing that's on their property, say giving it a range also, so it's not like you're nailed down to a dollar, mm -hmm. but this should be twelve to eighteen thousand dollars to do this project. Yeah, as a homeowner, they don't. The, most of them have no idea what it's going to cost, yep. other than expensive. That's right. Right, and I'm not ready to engage with expensive, so I'm not even going to make a phone call to somebody. Yep. But if I get a letter that comes in and says, or a, a, a handwritten out estimate from a company that says. Hey, we can do this for about twelve thousand, fourteen thousand, whatever it is. Like, hmm, I was thinking twenty five. Yep. That's actually reasonable, you know. And sure. so you're 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 helping them engage in something they want, but they wouldn't. They'd wait till later on till like, okay, it's starting to fall apart. Yep. You know. Yep. So that's right. So those are our ten. If you want this list of ten things you can do today. Go to ProStruck360.com and go to the contact us and send us an email. We will send you this list. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll give it give it to you, email it over to you if you need it. Uh, the goal of this is to help jumpstart those guys that are looking for work. Or maybe you've got work, but now it's time to grow. I just hired someone. I want to get some more work. These are some things to be doing to really push you forward on, on continuing the, the spread of your name. Now, a lot of this doesn't help 
if you have a bad reputation. And so you got to protect your reputation. You've got to, you got to prove to these people and put your money where your mouth is to where when I tell someone I'm going to do something, I do it. Right. Uh, And that's how we start making these new connections, these new potential clients and really starting to get a larger pipeline and more jobs for the future, as well as the phone ringing in two months because they have your card now. That sort of thing. Right. That's all we've got. Thanks so much for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Good luck. All right. Bye. Bye. 